and they kind of project into that team all the qualities that they wish they had in their own life, like to be a winner and successful. And so they kind of lose their identity in that of their sports team, like some people do with religion. They're basically unhappy with themselves, but they just throw themselves into Christ. Or they just throw themselves into Torah to the exception of themselves. It's like, oh, I don't matter. You know, all that matters is Torah, Christ, the Dodgers, the Lakers, the Cowboys, whatever. And so they then, you know, locate all their hopes and dreams and their aspirations and what they wish they could be in this team or this religion or a politician like Barack Obama. Like a lot of people like invested their personal happiness in Barack Obama. He was like the symbol for them and because uh, their own lives were basically empty. So I think the more you're invested in a sports team, the more likely you are to be unhappy. I'm not disagreeing with you, yeah. but I'm saying that a sports is such a gigantic business in America. Mm -hmm. The ratings are off the charts mm -hmm. for, for it, you know? Mm -hmm. The Super Bowl is the biggest event mm -hmm. in America, you know? Um, I, I predict that the Super Bowl will have more interest than the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's rioting in the streets when, when, when a team wins something. And By people, certain segments, like the black and Latino underclass. Well, it's, a, it's a custom that when your team wins, white people three, three black people need to die. <laughs> There's no white people out there overturning cars and burning them, generally speaking, when sports teams win franchises, but go ahead. Uh, you well, know, it's not Asians either, So, generally. So you've got all of that going on, right? Mm -hmm. So w sports is such a phenomenally big thing in America, and we're on the small end of it, because mm -hmm. there's people who go to the games, mm -hmm. and we don't even go to the damn games. Right. I don't know about you, but I haven't been to a game in years, of any, of any sport. And and there's people that like go all the time. They have season tickets and and all this. Are you saying that all of these people are depressed? No, no, no. I'm that is America. That... All is America depressed, and is that why sports are so huge in America? Because Americans are all depressed. I have. I don't know if I buy into yeah, but that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the more involved someone is in following sports, the more likely it is that they're depressed and unhappy. So I'm not saying that all people who follow sports are unhappy or depressed. I'm saying the more involved someone is in following sports, the more likely it is that they're unhappy and depressed. And that the on the contrary, the people who are the most going on in their lives are the least likely to be heavily involved in sports. I'm thinking of a, a survey that was cited in the, the Washington Post about the difference between people earning over $100,000 a year that they watch basically one third as much television as people making under thirty thousand dollars a year. Oh, I know. The, the, they the, work harder. You know, people, the, if you're if you're working your ass off all the time, right? You're, you don't have time to watch TV. You don't have time to watch. And, watch and the TV. idea, people, the only people in America who don't own TVs are not the people who can't afford them. It's the people who buy, don't want them. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, have, I'm not interested. I don't want to see this crap. Right. Right. It's a choice people make, and it has it's it's got nothing to do with income. Everybody owns a TV, basically, right? Doesn't right. matter how much right. money you have, you know. And uh, the question of who watches it the most is basically, I would agree that somebody who doesn't work or doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And the proof of this is, you you ever watch daytime TV? No. Look at the commercials. It's always like, are you out of work? Do you need yeah. a job? Yeah. Right. It's always during the day that daytime commercials yeah. are. Do you have bad credit? Yeah. <laughs> you don't see the credit commercials at night. Yeah. They're always during the day. Because I figure the guy who's out of work, his credit, his credit is shot because he can't pay off his car anymore, right? Because he's not working, right? They, it's always like those are the daytime ones, you know, and the right. Like oh, if oh, let's say we oh, had Bender a, and Bender right, right. don't come on disability at night. Insurance. The disability yeah. people are always during the yeah. day because they yeah. figure if you're watching, you're not working, yeah. and you're yeah. probably you're disabled, right? Bender and Bender are during right. the day, right? Uh, there was another one too that that's in there during that. Oh. All of the depression pills are sold during the day. You don't see them at night. All of the depression pills, all the antidepressants are sold during the day, right? Because they figure people at home, they're not working and they're depressed. <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. So, like, if we had a daily radio show, and let's say, let's say the show was focused on politics, or the show was focused on Torah, okay. or the show was focused on entertainment, or the show was focused on humor, 
Okay. Like, we would we would lead different lives. Like our show would be the primary focus of our life. We'd still enjoy a little sports, but it'd be much more recreational. We'd be less invested in it. We'd be less involved, and we'd primarily be involved in okay. What are our ratings? What do we need to do to goose up our ratings? How can we get on a bigger radio station? How can we get nationally syndicated? That's what we'd be thinking about all the time. We'd be thinking about, oh, how can we move ahead with our career? Maybe I would be, but you'd be thinking about how do I get now? How do I get chicks over? How do I parlay? That's for sure. How do I parlay? This, this is this? not the. You know, how do I parlay with a lot of women? It's not the. Part how do I parlay? Okay, I've got, I made it. I've made it. You know, and now I've got a living. How do I parlay this into some action? And <laughs> that's what you would be thinking. Like when life is going good for for a guy, you're thinking primarily about your career. Like if your career's going, you're like fantasizing about how can I make more money. How can I be more successful? Really? I was never like that. That's how I am. I'll just speak for myself. I was never like that. I would say like this. I I've never been like the the guy who's like trying to make a million dollars. I've never been that guy. I was always the guy that like, what's the least I have to do, right? What's the minimum I I have to do, just so I can get by. Get by. Shocking. Yeah. And that's why I went into being a Unix admin. Right, because the way that it worked in the Unix world was, you you, you go through like a, some training and you become the Unix guy and you're like a specialty and and they'll, everybody just kisses your ass, you know, because there's no there's really no competition because there wasn't enough of us to go around and we just like sit there and do nothing all day until they're like there's a Unix problem once a week and we come in and like we fix it and we just sit there and jerk off on the internet for for. 40 hours a week at work doing nothing and it was like a joke and 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 that's and I was comfortable with that and they're like well you are you are, you don't you don't have management you know you want to move up you have to be a manager and I'm like I have no interest in managing other people I really don't I've never been the kind of person that like I really want to lay your ass off you know and stuff like that I don't want those headaches right I just leave me alone and I just want to check my email and you know watch YouTube's all day and that's what I want. What if your career was doing stand-up comedy? I was doing stand-up comedy. Making a living from doing stand-up comedy. Oh, that means like I had my own TV show or something like that. Or somehow you were making your living from doing comedy. Okay. You would be pretty invested. I was your very invested. Your fantasies would be about moving your head, you know, becoming more successful. No, I'm not like that. My, my fantasy would be... What do you fantasize about, Rabbi? Well, no, my fantasy, my fantasy would be become reality. It would have been actualized because my fantasy is to make a living doing comedy. Doing comedy. And so if, if you were able to do that, you'd have no more fantasies on this. No, part. not on that, not in that area because because I would have already completed it. What sort of fantasies do you have? Uh, right now, I fantasize about having a wife by the time I turn fifty. And what else? Uh, that's basically <laughs> and, and 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 having a thousand dollars a month coming in. <laughs> and don't forget to write your checks. You're not afraid that you're aiming too high. <laughs> I what those are I just I just want like the minimum stuff, you know so what I'm saying? So that you can get by. So that I can get by, you know. I'm perfectly content just to do this show once a week. Was not there a poke about that says who is the rich man? He was content. Hey, so who I share? Uh, uh, that uh, is you are you are very easily satisfied. I'm easily satisfied. Well, right now I'm not. I'm not satisfied with what I have right now because I have a very shitty well, life. if you can get an extra thousand a month, an and extra one thousand a month, and even a if she's ten pounds overweight, I don't mind that. Yeah, that doesn't bother me so much. So my, my my fiance was anorexic. She weighed ninety five pounds. How tall was she? Five seven. Oh my god! I mean, do you have like children fantasies? With the year no. Oh, you mean of, of having children or, or? No, no, no. Did you like thinking of her? Oh, she's got the body of an eleven-year-old boy. No, I th that's I, hot for me. No, she has the body, like body of an Auschwitz survivor. I mean, <laughs> do, you, it's scary. do you think? Do you think that you fetishize the Holocaust so that you're looking to marry someone who looks like an Auschwitz? No, 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 no. I did not. She did not start off like that. Did you shave her head and make her wear those? those her hair pajamas? fell out. No, no, no. Is no. very good. <laughs> <laughs> strike the and play, play commandant and Jewish slave woman. <laughs> you filmed. <laughs> what kind of fantasy games do you play with your wife? <laughs> you know, my favorite is therapists. I like them to play. No, therapists. no, ours would have been would have been would have been uh, a daddy and little girl, right? Because she was eighteen right, and right, I was right. forty five. Yeah, if incest was your thing. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I like therapists. I like it to be like dressed professionally.